Hey, Composing Gloves here. Today we're going to end this sound and synth basics video. Oh, I had to slow down there. Let's slow down. We're going to talk about... We're going to talk about waveforms. Man, that, that took a little bit. That's a, a sure way to kick off a tutorial. All right, so we're going to talk about waveforms, the basic, the basic types of waveforms and what they are, what they do. You should be pretty familiar with a lot of basic stuff. So we're going to go ahead and talk about um, some common ways that we put these... Uh, all these different sine waves to the test, how we combine them and what they're good for. Now, I want to start off by saying a few things. Um, first is, there are only a few really considered basic waveforms that pretty much every VST you use should have some way to use. And they're just common relationships between sine waves. That's all they are. So, I opened up Citrus. This is You could open up probably anything. Liter well, literally anything. You could open up 3 OSX... Where is that? Here it is. This jazz is old, so here we have some sine waves. And so if we play it, we get a sine wave. Now, I'm going to use Citrus because I like it. It's a bit fancier. But we even have some additional options here. So if we have our sine wave, we have a triangle wave. Let me go up. That's a triangle wave. That's a. This is a, a sine wave. Now we get this little click at the beginning. I'm going to explain to you that all waveforms are a lie in just a sec. So ignore the click at the beginning. And then here we have a saw wave. You'll notice this saw wave is slightly different than Harmer's saw wave. There's a reason for that. Um, and then mostly because I'm not sure they use the same, they use the same formula, but they did it slightly different. So you get a slightly different saw wave with their method. And you have a square wave. And then you also have this thing. Let me just turn this down. There's no reason to have it up. And then the, you also have this thing called the pulse wave, which is like a square wave, only the cycle is weird because it starts off with zero, jumps up, jumps down, goes zero. Now, this is why all waveforms are a lie. So you've never heard a true sine wave. You've never heard a true square wave. You've never heard a true anything as far as ideal waveforms are concerned. And I know I haven't even talked about what's in them, but I want to point out something. So here's a sine wave. It has to go up and down so many times. Uh, and it has to do this forever. A true sine wave will do this forever. So right off the bat, we're on to a bad start. Uh, but here's the problem. You've probably turned on your sine wave and turned it off. And my argument is you're not listening to a sine wave right now. So therefore, you've never actually heard a real sine wave. Because you have to listen to it forever and you've turned it off. What are you talking about, Mr. Gloves? Like, how can this be the truth? Well... I'm glad you asked. We have this oscillation, right? An ideal world will go from zero, uh, from negative one to positive one, negative one, positive one, all the time. But as soon, as soon as you add a volume change, you have created what looks like a sine wave, but it's not actually a sine wave. What the what the deal is going on right now is when you move it down, you've changed the rate that this oscillates at, and you've actually added high frequency content. You've added this really high frequency. And it's not a true idea. It's not a true wave anymore. Now you run into a note, so that's one reason why amplitude changes. Changes in whenever you move the volume, you've just changed this positive-negative relationship. You've moved it a bit. You've added high-frequency content. No longer a sine wave. It is now a complex waveform. Complex waveform is simply anything that's not really a sine wave. It does not. It does not have a periodic oscillation like this and a, a complicated sine. But now it's complex waveform because it's got higher harmonic information and it's not doesn't keep a steady rate anymore. So you might be saying that's very academic reasoning. Well, it is, but you've never heard one. So I'm just telling you the way it is. Um, now, the other thing, the other reason why you've never heard one is because your speakers are limited in their ability to move forward instantly and backwards instantly. And they've not been vibrating forever. And you also have noise in your wires. You have noise in your digital system. So there's just a billion reasons why. A lot of them, though, as we can see, they are so neg negligible that you've pretty much heard, you've heard a sine wave. But I just want you to know that it's a lie. If you come over here to this, your buddy, the, oh, but I'm friends with the square wave or the saw wave. Surely I've heard a true version of them. Oh, this one's easier to disclaim. It's a straight line. Like, what do you know that can instantly teleport to the other side? Your speakers are going to, like, freak out when they see this. They simply can't do it. They There's going to be a little rounding off right here. That's actually the big point of the mathematician that fought Mr. Fourier that said his, his information was theoretically not true was because of this reason. Now, all systems are band limited. 
and you're going to learn about bandwidth later. So I know that I haven't really talked about waveforms yet, but we're getting into it now. I just want to show you that all your waveforms are a freaking lie. Like you've never actually heard a true version of any of these, but you've heard really great approximations. So when we begin to layer up, so I have this ability to add in harmonics at will. I'm not going to use any of this. So first up, we have our sine wave. It's a single tone. There's no higher harmonic information, and that's it. Um, academically, this is textbook waveforms. Now, if we come up here, we have our buddy, the, the triangle wave. We're going to skip over to the saw wave, actually. Here is the saw wave. And you see that it goes down and then up and then down and then up. I, uh, the strings do this. And what is, what's the deal with this, with this jazz right here? How are they getting all these extra things? Well, if we turn this into our, hey, where's my signal? Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's our triangle wave. We can see that things get softer as we go up and that our harmonics change. So what it does is it takes our fundamental and it multiplies it by one and we get we get our fundamentals so sometimes the fundamental is called the first harmonic then you multiply it by two and you get the second harmonic so if our fundamental is 100 our second uh harmonic is 200 our third harmonic would be 300 400 500 600 700 as we go up our harmonic scales but something happens as we go up and now let me well okay get ahead of myself as it goes up each harmonic gets one divided by the harmonic number softer. So our second harmonic is one half softer. Our third harmonic is one third the original volume level. I, not softer. It gets one third the original volume level of the fundamental. Our, like For example, our 537th harmonic is one 537th harmonic softer. And now we run into this interesting problem that, whoa, but we, do we have that many harmonics? Like, is that a thing? Well... A true saw wave, another another textbook thing, goes on forever, forever. This doesn't. Um, so, but it's it does what we need it to. So we this for all intents and purposes is our saw wave. But again, that's that's true with all these. They have these ideals of infinity, and we just simply can't do that. So that's the saw wave. That's the harmonic structure. And when you manipulate this, now you, they are all in phase. I should also note that these all these definitions I'm giving you all say that they start in phase and some. None of them are like randomized phase. So let's come over here to your buddy, the triangle wave. Let's go to the square wave. Square wave's easier. So here's your square wave. We could see it doing its square wave thing right now. And we'll notice that we have we seem to have these outlines of harmonics as we come up here. It only takes every other harmonic. So you multiply the fundamental times numbers like one, three, five, seven, nine odd numbers. And you sum those together and you get the, the square wave. They, the, in this case, the harmonics are actually louder than the fundamental. And as a result, that changes the timbre. So let's talk about this thing called timbre. It's spelled T-I-M-B-E-R for some, for some linguistic reason. So uh, this changes. This is what a square wave is. Square waves have lots of interesting implications because of they're all made. These are all our sine waves, and as they get higher up, because of the way our hearing works, we tend not to hear it. Again, it needs an infinite range, and the timbre is what makes an instrument sound the way it does. So, a clarinet sounds like a clarinet, and a flute sounds like a flute because their fundamental frequencies, which are the lowest notes, and they also are usually. They are also the notes that all these ratios are coming off of because our fundamental frequency defines the note. That's the note you would say, it's this note. Now there are like, it gets way more intense later on, but right now it's this note. And then the overtones, or in this case, they're harmonics. Whenever they're a ratio of the fundamental, they're harmonics, uh, that defines what that sounds like. So the clarinet has different overtones than the flute. And some of these are louder than others. There's a specific ratio and they change. And this is what makes instruments so beautiful and nice. Now, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. So the phase, it's got to line up in phase. Otherwise it's going to sum differently. And it's not a square wave anymore. It's something else because of some will subtract and add. It won't make a square shape anymore. Uh, harmonics add. All right, I'm just gonna move on. So here we have a triangle wave. It's again adding all the har odd harmonics, but this time you get so it's all the odd ones except for. Oh, I want to talk about overtones. 
before I talk about triangle waves. Overtones are tones that are not multiples of the fundamental. And so that's that. That's what I'm going to leave it at for now. There's a, there's a rule about the first, the fundamental being called the first harmonic, but it's not called the first overtone. I can't totally remember right now, but it, it gets a little weird terms wise when you start talking about that. But okay. So anyways, yeah, things are not the in relationship. So they are there in a natural sounds. They're there. I'm also going to show you some tendencies of waveforms in this video. So as we play it, here we have our triangle wave, odd harmonics, except for you can see they get substantially softer as we go up into eternity. And what's the deal with this? What is the ratio there? The ratio is as it gets softer, you get, let's say, for example, this is a third harmonic. That would be one ninth the fundamental or, or the fifth harmonic, one twenty fifth. So it's one divided by the har whatever the frequency is, the harmonic number squared. So that's how, that's how they get softer. Now there's a variety of uh, reasons you'd use these different ones. A lot of them are sound design and you'll discover those when you learn VSTs. I'm going to let you use VSTs as your guide as you go through maybe some of my from the ground up courses. Now we do have this last guy, the pulse wave. The pulse wave is just like a shifted square wave. So you get no volume, volume. So suddenly you have a square wave and then no volume again. So that's the that's the pulse wave. And it happens really fast. So you perceive it as a tone. Now, uh, there are some tendencies that we need to talk about. So hopefully I've like covered this thing pretty, pretty well. Like this should be pretty well explained. If you have any problems, uh, drop it in the comments, but hopefully you get it. So let's open up a piano and talk about some general rules as I wait for my contact to load up. Okay. So we're going to load up the giant because it's just a nice piano. And actually, I want that back. Okay. So one of the things you'll see happen in real instruments is so we some the overtones will be different for each instrument just because of what we talked about earlier. The phases will add up differently. This is also why placing mic microphones when you're recording a source is so important because if you get a bad phase relationship, you're going to have cancellation, but uh, it's also going to ruin the timbre of the instrument, which is why it sounds so bad. So here I have a piano. And we can see the notes coming across here. Now you'll notice as the notes increase as the harmonics go up, they roll off, they get softer a lot faster, and the low harmonics tend to sustain. This is something that you're just going to, with plucked instruments, that's just what happens. And Harmer, if we open it up, oh, now I can show you the weird Harmer thing too. They have this option called the pluck knob, uh, which you could do this with a filter. Just make a filter that filters off the top end uh, faster. So with the pluck, here's our note. It's a saw wave. And as we go down... It does exactly that. And they have their, actually their own spectrogram here, spectral display. So you can see the upper stuff's getting chopped way faster than the lower stuff. You can e Oh, you can even see it over here. How nice. And if we make it longer, it begins to sound more and more like a saw wave because the sustain comes back. And so one other thing you need to know is they use brownie noise. And I'm not so sure the one-fifth, one-third relationship is in this one. They all seem pretty evenly loud. As you can see, they just seem like, look at that. And they just cut off. Now I have a multitude of reasonings behind some of this. So to me, this is almost like square wave. I'm not sure. Cause that's definitely not the same setup that Citrus did. So this is like some weird version of a saw wave. And I don't have anything against this. I think I actually really like their saw wave. I like having that option. They use a frequency index cause it's additive synthesis and it's a really different thing. Go watch my Harmer from the ground up series. If you want to know more about Harmer, but it's, this is one of my favorite VSTs, but anyways, so that's that. Now there's a few other things you need to know. And there's these two, uh, which are types of noise. So there, there are two big types of noise are called white noise and peak noise. I'm not going to address them at this point because I address them later on and some of their uses. So that's that. Those are the basic types of waves forms. That's, and you can manipulate the relationship of the harmonics to each other. And essentially, if you know how to change the phase, the relative amplitude and uh, the frequency, so the rate it's oscillating of each of the individual harmonics, you can synthesize anything if you can control those things. So you need to just keep that in mind when you're doing stuff. So that's that. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Reversing. Reversing. Reversing.